Hello everyone, myself Dr. Pradyot, founder and director of Movement Maestro Academy. Welcome you all to our global platform, Movement Maestro Academy official YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss on role of physiotherapy and ergonomics in prenatal, antenatal and postnatal care. For this session, I am glad to invite our renowned resource person, Dr. Aditi Kulkarni, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Aditi Kulkarni. I'm a consultant physiotherapist and ergonomist. I'm one of the directors of the Active Physiotherapy and Ergonomics Clinic. Uh, now I have associated with one of the hospital as an HOD in the Hyderabad as well. I have completed my Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Fellowship in Sports Science, Cardiac Rehabilitation. I have completed my post-graduation diploma in Exercise Medicine. Also, I have completed my post-graduation degree course in Clinical Research and Management. I am uh, mostly associated with the sports uh, uh, injuries as well as the cardiac rehabilitation, then the uh, respiratory uh, physiotherapy, as well as the clinical practitioner. Uh, today, I am going to cover the role of physiotherapy and ergonomics in the pre and postnatal phase. Uh, most of the time in the previous uh, sessions, I have covered ergonomics uh, for the footwear, ergonomics in a different different field. Other than that, I have complete, uh, taken sessions on the sports injuries. Uh, sometimes I have taken in the cardiac rehabilitation, sometimes I have taken in the respiratory, which are my specialities. But today, uh, I am going to cover the role of physiotherapy and ergonomics in the pre and the postnatal phase because recently uh, i had been through uh, uh, the beautiful journey of pregnancy to becoming a mother and now i can uh, share my experience as well as i have already experienced all these things so i can tell you what exactly uh, is the role of physiotherapy what are the actual myths and what are the uh, things you can actually implement in your daily routine and uh, as well as uh, how exactly uh, you have to take care of yourself in the pre and the postnatal phase of your uh, life because that is one of the most important period of in the female's life and we have to take care of ourselves but we don't know how exactly we can uh, help each other or otherwise when to uh, seek a physiotherapist help and when not to uh, when to stop the physiotherapy when to continue physiotherapy what are the things physiotherapist can uh, 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 can cover up uh, what are the things physiotherapist can teach you and what are the things you have to ask to the physician or the uh, any kind of a gynecologist or the obstetrician so those are the things in this uh, uh, following sessions i'm going to cover up In today's session, uh, we'll fo basically focus on the role of physiotherapy and the corrected postures in the most beautiful phase of woman's life from the conceiving pregnancy to becoming a mother. In most of the country, healthcare provider focus on the ANC, that is antenatal care, which is the pre-delivery uh, pre phase to have a healthy mother and a baby. But uh, according to me or according to the all uh, medical fraternity, actually antenatal care as well as the postnatal care are equally important for the mother and the baby's health. We personally feel that physically and mentally healthy mother can deliver a healthy baby, which can be uh, mentally and physically healthy too. Antenatal care is something which is a, a person who is who, uh, the woman who has conceived and now that the journey has started of becoming the pregnancy to conceiving and now that baby is started developing in the womb. So it is like the care of the woman during pregnancy. The primary aim is to achieve at the end of the pregnancy is a healthy mother and a healthy baby. It starts immediately from the time of conception because most of the people think that it is going to start after the fourth and fifth month so that we can join the exercise therapy we can do meditation or some sort of an uh, uh, care which uh, mother need but it is the uh, beautiful phase and you have to start understanding that the baby has already started developing in your womb the first uh, heartbeat you have already heard at the sixth or the seventh week of your uh, ultrasonography so that time uh, the, uh, you immediately come to know that you are a pregnant person and you have to take care of yourself as well as your baby in the each and every aspect of your life so uh, that's why I have written that it start immediately from the time of conception. 
you came to know that you are pregnant and now the baby is inside your womb and has started already developing all the feelings of the mother all the circumstances the mother is going through what are the fitness exercises a uh, mother is doing how is the respiratory capacity how is the bowel and uh, bowel and bladder movement how is the constipation condition how exactly uh, that woman is dealing with the urinary issues how exactly she has a hormonal imbalance what are her uh, vitamins and the proteins levels inside her body how exactly is the hemoglobin uh, percentage inside her body everything is going to get affect to your baby so it's important that you have to start uh, antenatal care can be um, uh, having a good food can be having a healthy atmosphere at house can be uh, it can be a good exercise therapy which you can give it to your body you can consult a good physiotherapist and you can start uh, doing an exercises for yourself otherwise uh, you can join many classes which are known as the garbha sanskar classes so those are the things which you can start immediately from the time of conception there are multiple changes are going to happen at the time of pregnancy that's why we generally say it's the second birth of a woman when she deliver a baby so a lot many physiological changes she is going to uh, going to undergo at the time of her pregnancy there are uh, respiratory changes there are endocrinal changes cardiovascular uh, then the reproductive renal and the gi tract is going to involve there are major issues happen with the musculoskeletal and the postural thing neurological issues also sometimes they can face can be uh, nerve compression issues because of the increasing uh, weight in the womb and as which is putting a pressure on the spine and which is again causing a compression of the nerves during pregnancy even before the bum start showing actually the bum start showing the body goes through the major changes the posture and the way of body moves change because the person is going to stand upright but still the womb has already started getting expansion now the weight uh, the center of gravity has started shifting anteriorly and that time it is going to be the laxity of the muscles ligaments and the soft tissue they become more flexible elastic they allow the pelvis to stretch to accommodate the baby all these changes happen due to the hormonal changes and they are very important for the baby to grow inside your womb they need to occur for the body to prepare to create a beautiful human being and to allow the baby to grow in the tummy during roughly the 9 months that which is going to follow in the following duration the center of gravity changes there are more pressure on the organs and there is increased weight to be carried all these in the relatively short period often leads to the back pain pelvic pain and the urinary incontinence urinary incontinence pelvic pain and the back pain are the pretty common issues there are multiple other issues also can get involved into the uh, female's life but otherwise uh, we generally focus on these uh, in a uh, on a daily basis so okay, these are the things which are definitely a female are going to experience in the hormonal changes there are uh, uh, hormones which are going to start acting on the ligaments the soft tissues and the muscles which automatically causes the expansion which increases in the body weight because a uh, baby has already started in the, uh, developing in the womb which increases in the abdominal size due to the growing uterus if there are uh, some abnormalities are happening inside the uterus along with the baby can be the fibroid then the more expansion is going to happen then the again female is going to suffer more because fibroids and everything along with the baby is going to require more of the hormones to develop along with your baby so those hormonal changes increase body weight increase abdominal sizes automatically uh, causes n number of musculoskeletal changes inside your body which you have to take in consideration from the day one when you start uh, having antenatal care there is a increase water retention which is very specific uh, female are going to face from the conception till the 9 months increase water retention which causes actually the edema and the nerve compression that's why a uh, female face a difficulty at the time of walking sometimes there is a face puffiness there are lot many hormonal changes are happening that's why they put on lot of weight as well as uh, the belly is also increasing but those are completely a normal uh, thing which is going to happen because of the increased water retention inside your body sometimes the nerve compression can lead to the carpal tunnel syndrome decurvin syndrome so or uh, otherwise there is a sciatic pain otherwise uh, there can be a foot drop kind of a thing you know may, very uh, rare cases foot drop kind of a thing can happen but otherwise sciatica then the carpal tunnel otherwise the compressions are going to happen very uh, uh, very often because of the increased water retention 
drop in the pelvic floor the pelvic floor dysfunction is particularly female face quite an often painful muscle cramps can be a restless pay a leg syndrome also can sometimes it can lead to a very uh, rare condition is a restless leg syndrome painful muscle cramps are pretty common in the female at the time of pregnancy pregnancy associated osteoporosis which is pretty common in the female who are already deficient of the calcium vitamin d vitamin uh, vitamin b12 or other kinds of an uh, things which are requiring for the baby's growth on a daily basis if they are uh, lacking already and then again because of some issues they are not able to take the supplementations can be the constipation can be uh, due to a severe vomiting can be the hyperemesis gravidurum kind of an condition then that time pregnancy associated osteoporosis is pretty common in the female so we have to take all this kind of an history into consideration of the female and we have to design the physiotherapy protocol for them in the phase of antenatal care diastasis recti and the diastasis pubis is one of the thing which most of the female uh, at the time of physiotherapy practices i have uh, i have treated diastasis recti is something those muscles get lax there is a increase in the distance because of the increasing belly uh, uh, the uterus is growing inside because the baby is growing inside the uterus and the muscles are spreading a lot if you are already an obese person if there is a lot of weakness in your abdominal muscles if you are not into exercises at all not even in the simple walking also then there are multiple chances that you will face a diastasis recti diastasis pubis is something which is again the laxity uh, or the hormonal changes which are happening inside the body the muscles are going to get into the lax then the ligaments also get lax then the soft tissues also get into laxity and the distance increases and there is a lot of pain female experience for the throughout a 9 months uh sometimes it can be because of the sexual intercourse which is happening and that time also diastasis pubis uh, can happen but that definitely you have to uh, talk to your gynecologist what exactly is the issue what is the root cause and how you can be able to correct it there are multiple postural changes female face because of the abdominal size is increasing center of gravity as i just mentioned it is shifting anteriorly so automatically the protracted shoulders are going to happen the hyper extension of the knee is going to happen protraction of the shoulder automatically pulls your neck front a little bit of uh, head front and that also causes a complete pressure on the upper abdominals uh, sorry the upper back and as well as the neck postures so that means your cervical spine and the thoracic spine are going to be into the more of tightness as compared to the other uh, body parts so those are the things which are going to cause more pain to you or otherwise going to cause a protractions of the shoulder which also increases the lumbosacral angle increases the lumbar lordosis and the thoracic kyphosis which i just mentioned the muscles are going to become more tight at the uh, at the uh, site of thoracic spine and the more lax at the time of your uh, at the place of your lumbar spine so because of that the stretch have become um, stretch muscles become weak and the lordotic muscles and the kyphotic curves are going to get increased so automatically the center of gravity pulls front anteriorly and it causes a lot of postural changes in the females life at the time of even walking even at the time of standing Uh, they might can also uh, balance at the time of they develop the wide base of support if they have to stand or otherwise they develop a waddling gait but those are the things which we have to take care at the time of physiotherapy exercises protocol development so uh, these issues uh, in the females life they can face on a very minor level or otherwise it will be very negligible and they'll be able to live their life independently with a very balanced way role of physiotherapy in the antenatal care so uh, how exactly physiotherapy is going to help you in the antenatal care that part we are going to start right now i am not actually going to tell you what are the exercises you all have to do because exercises is something from person to person can differ because of the condition of that person and there are basic thing which are applicable to all that i am going to show you but the prevention and the treatment of the musculoskeletal problem is the basic thing which we are going to do it in the physiotherapy promoting a healthy lifestyle which are going to modify the ergonomic postures the postural and ergonomic advices are going to give to them we are going to prepare them for the labor we are going to uh, teach them the breathing exercises then the relaxation exercises optimal physical fitness as per the person to person we are going to do as by the doing an assessment and we are going to teach them based on that 
these are the certain exercises certain stretches female actually do at the time of pregnancy which are uh, uh, applicable uh, to most of the female but not all all i can say but that differs from person to person that's why i said assessment is very important before prescribing anything to the female uh, female who is undergoing the uh, phase of a pregnancy or the delivery at the or otherwise a postpartum period whenever we start exercises at the time of pregnancy it reduces the common complaints of the pregnancy such as fatigue varicose veins swelling of the extremities fatigue is something which every woman is going to face some or the other time like the first trimester or the second trimester or the third trimester but definitely fatigue is going to be remaining there we can reduce it but we cannot make sure that the person is not going to get fatigue at all varicose veins is something definitely associated with the muscle laxity or the uh, circulatory uh, circulation issue you are going to uh, uh, do a physiotherapy in a proper manner we are going to activate your muscles we are going to make sure that you are activating and doing an exercises for those muscles so at a certain extent we can reduce the chances of getting varicosities for sure then the swelling of the extremities can be controlled can be reduced or can be maintained for the throughout 9 months by doing a good exercise or the vigorous exercises for the calf muscles or the lower extremity exercises so it will be helpful or the reduce these kind of complaints in the pregnancy it reduces insomnia stress anxiety and the depression whenever person do certain exercises with the which are suitable for his body automatically happiness hormones start getting secreted because of that automatically stress and anxiety and the depression kind of an issues we can overcome insomnia is uh, most of the female experience in the, the third trimester or otherwise sometimes in the second trimester also they can experience but that time if they are facing those issue those exercises are can be a breathing exercise can be the relaxation techniques can be a good exercise physiotherapy can be the chair exercises chair yoga kind of an exercises those help to reduce this kind of an insomnia and stress and anxiety and depression kind of an issues with them weight bearing exercises reduces the length of the labor and prepare the woman for the physical demands of the labor there are certain misconceptions that you are not supposed to do exercises in the standing posture you have to lay down or you have to sit and then only you have to do an exercise no the repetition has to be less the real number of frequent the doing a frequent exercises has to be less but definitely there are exercises which you can do it in the wet bearing position can be a standing position can be a proprioceptors exercises definitely help to maintain a good postures as well as to maintain the stamina of the muscles against gravity at the time of uh, which is also going to help you to reduce the length of the labor and prepare the woman for the physical demands of the labor because labor is something which is very painful condition that time you are uh, going to be in such a phase of your life you are going to experience pain there will be muscle contraction there will be cramps in the legs as well as cramps in the stomach there will be com continuous contractions in the back muscles you will not be able to uh, into a stable postures and those changes are not only going to be associated with your only stomach entire body is associated with that labor pain so that time your all the muscles should be ready to take that pain and that pain will be easy definitely not less because every woman has to go through that every woman is going to experience labor pain at the time of delivery uh, apart from the cesarean section or the some uh, other kinds of uh, surgeries but definitely labor pain that woman who is going to experience have to have a good physical fitness which will help them to overcome those kind of pain or it will be a very easy process for them improves core stability and the pelvic floor muscles strength why this is so important is because the body uh, entire body is anterior uh, the center of gravity is shifting anteriorly and at the same point of time your pelvic floor muscles are also get active you are going to stand you are going to do certain activities those four uh, those muscles are going to require to take the entire weight of the uh, baby who is developing inside your womb so that time in this four muscles the pelvic floor muscles are going to help you to maintain that kind of an weight and definitely it will help you even after the uh, delivery that means in the postpartum period because those muscles definitely start showing symptoms if those are weak so you have to make sure that you are activating core as well as the pelvic floor muscles it improves the glycemic control there are uh, certain female who uh, uh, i have 
personally i can say i had a, a gestational diabetes so that time i was the one who didn't prefer to go for the medication i came to know in a very early stage and i maintained it with the good exercises good balanced diet as well as with the complete relaxation techniques so it uh, but definitely physiotherapy helps to maintain the glycemic control protective effects on the coronary heart disease osteoporosis and hypertension because the good circulation good muscle activation is going to help you to maintain those kind of overcome these kind of an issues improves posture strengthening of the muscles and maintaining muscle strength uh, length and the flexibility definitely once you are into exercises everybody know that it is going to uh, improve the muscle length as well as a good strength is going to get generated into that so definitely it helps to improve your posture because uh, correction of the posture is something which is associated with the muscular tightness or the uh, lengthness or otherwise it is stretching so when you are going to be into the good muscle length automatically your posture improves and you will be able to maintain a good well being of the for the throughout the day decrease birth weight and a less maternal weight gain this is something very common uh, issue everybody face after uh, delivery that i have put on lot of weight those weight uh, increased uh, bmi and uh, weight gain is very difficult for the female to come to the normal uh, when uh, you are you have already gone through the delivery phase and now you are into the postpartum period before that only in the anc time you can start working on your bmi yeah, yes for sure you are going to increase in the weight to 10 to 15 uh, kg increase in the weight from the normal routine weight is completely acceptable you are going to be uh, into uh, very for the for the initial Six months, you are going to maintain it very less, but definitely later on, your it will be very easy for that mother to reduce the weight. But to avoid all these kind of an issues and come back to the original weight uh, for your for the lifetime, it is very uh, important that you should start working on it at the time of antenatal care itself. Improves the feeling of well-being, helps in achieving the pre-pregnancy fitness levels. there are certain contraindications which are absolutely in this condition you are not supposed to do at all a physiotherapy there are certain things which i have mentioned over here the hemodynamically significant heart diseases like ischemic heart disease rheumatic heart disease or the congestive heart failure in that condition if you are pregnant you are not supposed to do physiotherapy at all certain physiotherapy exercises can be ankle to movement certain uh, heel press or any kind of a stuff, small small which are non uh, uh, any kind of a pressure is not going to generate on your muscles and it is not going to cause any kind of an heart issues to you then definitely under the observation you can perform certain exercises but not actual physiotherapy which we prescribe for the pregnant woman then the placenta previa preterm rupture of the membranes this uh, particular phase i had gone through so i know ki this is very uh, uh, delicate phase and you are not supposed to do that because the pregnancy induced hypertension then the history of preterm labor labor uh, is something which uh, people can experience at the time of fourth month or the fifth month or the seventh month at the time of this kind of an preterm labor if there is a circlage has to be done circlage that means the stitches are uh, given to the cervix so to protect the baby so uh, it should not uh, the delivery should not happen early so those kind of a things if the female is going then that time it is important that you should completely stop your physical exercises to protect that uh, stitches or otherwise uh, to avoid the preterm rupture of the membrane or otherwise if there is a preterm labor then also you have to take care of your uh, body as well as uh, to avoid any kind of strenuous exercises on the daily basis pregnancy induced hypertension is something which you have to take a bed rest on the left side because circulation has to get maintained and baby should get a good circulation the hormonal balance has to get maintained to the baby as well as to the mother so it's important that you should stop doing an exercises or the over strenuous exercises to avoid any kind of an um, injuries or the damage to the fetus which is developing inside your womb incompetent cervix acute infection thromboembolism or the pulmonary embolism persistent second or the third trimester bleeding or otherwise uh, in not only the bleeding even there is a lot of discharge the white discharge or the white watery discharge has started happening because of your strenuous exercises immediately you should stop uh, immediately you should consult your gynecologist and you have to stop exercising vigorously or otherwise if you are doing it for the 30 minutes you can make it up to 10 minutes but definitely under the observation of the gynecologist and the physiotherapist intrauterine growth retardation 
if there is a uh, amniotic fluid is lacking inside the body and uh, then you are uh, every sonography is going to tell you the number of how much is the amount of the amniotic fluid inside your body now yeah, what are the uh, there are double marker triple marker kind of a test which are very advanced tests which are going to tell you uh, about the growth of the baby so that time if you are finding any difficulty or any kind of an abnormality you are supposed to talk to your physiotherapist as well as your gynecologist and that time in coordination with both of them they are going to reach or re, uh, change your actual physiotherapy or otherwise they might can take an action that you have to stop physiotherapy so those things you have to take in consideration at the time of uh, doing physiotherapy or otherwise stopping physiotherapy there are relative contraindications which you can uh, think about chronic hypertension extreme morbidity uh, morbid obesity poorly controlled uh, seizure disorders mild to moderate cardiac diseases severe anemia twin pregnancy after uh, uh, after 28th week exercise induced asthma these are the uh, certain contraindications which you have to take in consideration as the same point of time i will tell you the signs to terminate physiotherapy exercises as i just mentioned you have to always uh, keep informed to your physiotherapist or otherwise a gynecologist about the symptoms which you are facing so that time uh, certain exercises which you are uh, going to stop those are the contraindications i have already mentioned now what are the signs that you have to terminate that excessive uh, shortness of the breath sorry if there is uh, something there are certain signs which help you to understand the termination of the physiotherapy exercises is uh, right now you have to take the decision for that there is a excessive shortness of the breath or the chest pain or the palpitations if there is a painful uterine contractions of uh, it, it can happen in the preterm labor as well pre syncope or the dizziness the vaginal bleeding excessive fatigue abdominal pain reduced fetal movements or the leakage of the amniotic fluid these are the certain things which you have to take in consideration and then you have to take a decision about it that you have to stop the physiotherapy or you have to continue the physiotherapy with the less vigorous exercises exercise is risk during pregnancy what can be the maternal risk or what can be the fetal risk people are going to face the musculoskeletal trauma the supine hypotension syndrome uh, certain times uh, female can fall or hypoglycemia can be the uh, thing which maternal uh, uh, female can face if there is a physiotherapy which are going on or otherwise exercises which they are going or uh, doing it which are not suitable for them uh, certain times the fetal risk are like fetal distress preterm labor or abnormal rise in the temperature you will definitely come to know those many symptoms if something is happening there is a leakage of the fluid or otherwise there is a less movement which you are feeling or otherwise there is a lot of uh, contractions you suddenly start experiencing those are associated even with the constipation those are associated even with the uh, exercises which you have recently done and then you started experiencing those symptoms then you have to immediately stop physiotherapy or you have to inform to the gynecologist as early as possible or you have to inform to the physiotherapist immediately ki yeah, i am experiencing these kind of symptoms exercise prescription in the pregnancy is based totally on the assessment of the fitness level of that particular female for the throughout her life if she has done something or not done something it is completely an individual goal the type of exercises which anybody can do is an aerobic exercises walking or the swimming the resistive exercises or the flexibility exercises which are also going to get designed by the physiotherapist intensity can be maximal heart rate is 60 to 70% for the poor woman who wear sedentary then 60 to 90% for the woman wishing to maintain the fitness during pregnancy who are already into fitness and now they are uh, wishing to maintain their fitness to during pregnancy then the box scale of the perceived exertion box scale and all those kind of an r comes under the expertise of the physiotherapist or the exercise medicine specialist those people are going to assess and they are going to tell you this is your fitness level these are the intensities available for you 
and this is how exactly from the slow to fast or fast to slow we are going to design your protocol whenever we are considering the physiotherapy exercises or the fitness exercises at the time of pregnancy you always have to remember from the first trimester to the third trimester the intensity the duration and the frequency is going to get reduced not increased because once we start going to the gym that time from slowly 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 you start progressing and then at the end of 6 uh, months or 7th month you are completely into the good fitness level but at the time of pregnancy when you are into the third trimester there are more chances you will do a damage to your baby inside the womb if you are doing a vigorous physiotherapy so avoid doing that make sure that when you are going to be in the first trimester you can do those things but those are not a mandatory things which you will be able to do it in the third trimester start from the 15 minutes and progression up to the 30 minutes not more than that you can do it minimum of 3 times a week then the proper warm up and a cool down period for the 5 to 10 minutes each and every session prior doing an exercise and post doing an exercise is mandatory for every female progression to 4 to 5 times a week can be done if it is allowed or if it is permitted by your gynecologist and a physiotherapist after the assessment but not mandatory at all that you have to perform 4 5 times a day 4 5 times a week because uh, uh, as the uh, baby is growing inside the womb the nutrition is also going to provide to the baby as well as your body also needs a nutrition to maintain that fitness level so make sure you are not straining yourself to make that goal happen to you because there are certain female i came across they are like i am not able to walk up to the lift but still i want to do an exercises don't do that your body is demanding now the rest to so give that rest to that particular body because that baby needs rest whatever your body is demanding are now the demands of your baby so you have to make sure that whatever you are doing it should be in consideration with your baby which is in growing inside your womb general guidelines for the exercise in the pregnancy are the physical examination is must as i said you have to visit a physiotherapist then you can get your physical examination done and then only you decide about a physical fitness protocol the jockey bouncing ballistic movements activity should be avoided warm up should proceed a uh, excessive uh, exercise session followed by the cool down and a gradual decline in activity as i just mentioned first trimester to third trimester you have to make sure that whatever exercises are applicable as per the trimester only you are going to decide for yourself not going to force your body which others are able to do it why i am not able to do it don't compare it is for individual goals so you have to make sure that you are going to focus on your own body and your baby's demands maternal heart rate should not exceed 140 beats per minute otherwise there are chances that fetal can go into the distress so it's most important that you should keep a complete check on the heart rate do not over exert over stretch joint or rapidly change directions avoid valsalva maneuver or avoid contact sports no prone position after the first trimester as i always say prone position that person should avoid even in the first trimester because uh, when you are lying into the prone position it is continuously putting the pressure onto the growing uterus so it's uh, you have to avoid those kind of an issues in the near future so best is that you have to start uh, lying down uh, you have to stop lying down in the prone position after the first trimester itself i am in the uh, following slides i am going to explain what are the good postures for the sleeping what are the activities which are uh, normal daily activities you have to follow the postures but you have to stop sleeping on the back in the first or from the first trimester itself avoid exercises in the supine after the fourth month uh, after the fourth month the baby's uh, weight is increasing rapidly and that is putting a pressure on your spine as well as in the vena cava so those things are going to affect uh, even in your breathing pattern your circulatory pattern you might can develop a cramp or otherwise there is a, a breathlessness also you might can develop so avoid exercises in the supine position after the fourth month which i advise uh, normally for the people you can do it in the sitting you can do it in the standing or you can just do a simple walking which is advisable by the body no pain no gain does not apply as i just mentioned it is not a gym fitness exercise it is your uh, pregnancy fitness exercises so make sure according to your body you are going to uh, do all those kind of an exercise fluid must be taken before during and after exercise to avoid dehydration uh, when you are uh, going to do an exercises in the other protocols you generally avoid to have a liquid whenever you are going to do an exercise 
but in the physio in the pregnancy physiotherapy we generally advise you take before during and after exercise to maintain a good hydration because if you are not hydrating yourself automatically you get fatigue very often there will be breathlessness as well as there will be lot of uh, sweating because of the exercise and you will not be having a good hydration you might can go into the restless kind of an issue so it's important to have a good fluid intake at the time of and even at the time uh, before and during the exercise session empty bladder before exercises and avoid gi discomfort by eating at least a one hour prior to an exercise strenuous exercise must be avoided in the hot humid weather or when a pregnant woman is pyrexial horseback riding gymnastics cycling during the pregnancy are not allowed at all because cycling is something which is going to again put a reverse pressure on the uterus so it's important that you are not going to do those kind of a, uh, a bouncing movements or otherwise any kind of a balancing action which are going to cause any kind of a damage to the growing uterus or otherwise uh, the ligaments or the soft tissues around it or otherwise it can cause a good, uh, laxity to the all muscles which are already getting lax or otherwise you are going to uh, do any kind of a jumping or the any kind of a excess weight bearing activities to avoid any kind of a damage to the baby who is getting a uh, develop into the womb certain relaxation technique which i personally followed and i also uh, suggest to the people to do that the michel method is a physiological relaxation the reciprocal relaxation of the muscle there are uh, certain apps are available on the internet or otherwise you can uh, check with your gynecologist if they are providing it to you or otherwise the physiotherapist who are already running their clinic they must be having those kind of an uh, instruction uh, so, uh, instruction series or otherwise uh, they have to put it on the internet those kind of a relaxation technique with the instructions you can do and you can make yourself completely relaxed contrast method at the jacobson relaxation technique which is something with alternately contracting and a relaxing muscle group which you can do it by your own also by giving a good uh, uh, a good uh, uh, any kind of an order to your muscle like a simply hand muscles or the eye muscles or the lips muscle you can tell that you are now completely relaxed and you are contracting then relax and contracting then this way you can proceed further the breathing exercises like a pausey breathing deep breathing exercises active uh, mobility exercises along with the breathing exercises you can perform so it will be a good relaxation for your body visualization and imaginary uh, is something which i generally uh, tell people if you are uh, getting restless or some kind of an emotional issues are going on that time you can sit in front of the candle you can focus on that and you can do that visualization or the imaginary and you can tell yourself in the positive affirmations and you can sit and continuously do the relaxation technique for at least a months or otherwise a weeks so, so that you can calm yourself and you can maintain your good well-being touch and massages which um, generally we advise to learn properly and then do it that's why i have not mentioned any kind of an uh, video or any kind of a uh, technique over here to show you all how to do the massage or otherwise how to do the touch techniques so the uh, generalized one example i can tell you you can keep your both palms resting on the uh, growing belly you can talk to your baby in the positive affirmations you can think that baby actually is listening to you and they are going to uh, develop a good communication as well as a good bonding with you so that touch and the even the massages on the abdominal belly Uh, definitely those are under uh, observations and you have to learn those skills and then only do it for the upper body lower body as well as the stomach but uh, those are very effective methods that you which will cause a uh, cause a good relaxation to you whenever you are into the physiotherapy at the time of antenatal care it improves the labor stamina which is most important improves a good flexibility which is going to help you at the time of antenatal and the postnatal care as well it is going to relieve the back pain it strengthens the pelvic floor muscles it relaxes and unwind prevention treatment of the musculoskeletal problems with the physiotherapy back and the pelvic girdle pain is pretty common which i just mentioned the prevention activities that reproduces the symptoms should be avoided proper postural education is important gentle massage hot packs stands certain kind of a stretching exercises are going to help you to overcome this kind of a pain sacroiliac joint dysfunction the support belts which are available you can uh, talk to your physiotherapist you can design it for yourself or otherwise you can get it on the internet uh, those are the basic one but definitely you can take advice from your physiotherapist and you can uh, uh, go for the support belt the various self help manuals can be taught to relieve the sacroiliac joint pain as i just mentioned you have to do it under observation so these are just in pictures which i can show it to you but you have to do it under the observation and then only you can do it so the stretching or the good uh, relaxation you can give it to your muscles and the body as well 
Suffice this pubis dysfunction, which is pretty common because of the lax muscles or the soft tissues. Diastasis pubis, rest and the re-education of the non-essential pores. So keeping the leg abducted, uh, adapted. Uh, then avoiding a uh, single leg stance. Avoid long stride when walking. Walking on the uneven surfaces and the excessive use of the steps. Gentle isometrics of the hip adapters, pelvic support belts, and the ice pack are one of the physiotherapical uh, physiotherapy remedies which you can do it for the symphysis pubis dysfunction. Coccidinia, that means the pain at the coccyx. A cushion can be placed at the time of sitting if you are going to sit in the prolonged period of time, if you are a walking woman, or otherwise if you are going to sit for the prolonged period of time, if you are on a bed rest. The gentle mobilization, ice pack, heat, ultrasound is one of the machine uh, electrotherapeutic modality. TENS is one of the electrotherapeutic modality, but definitely physiotherapists are the right person to understand ultrasound or the tense which one is the which modality is advisable for you or both the modalities are applicable to you that is completely an individual difference uh, and you are going to take it consideration with the physiotherapic uh, physiotherapy advices pelvic floor dysfunction is something uh, which you can face from the first trimester or otherwise you can face mostly in the third trimester when the actual belly has grown up the stress incontinence increased risk of the pelvic organ prolapse if there is a lot of muscular weakness. Kegel exercises, Kegel ball or the weights, vaginal cones, electronic Kegel exercises, electrical stimulators, that is electrical muscle stimulator. Electromyography can be used to train control, interferential therapy. Very rarely we advise interferential therapy because if the tense is working, then uh, very rarely we use interferential therapy. Bladder retraining programs are something with the exercises along with the muscular contraction and the relaxation method or otherwise a relaxation technique we can teach them. This flow, pelvic floor dysfunction can be maintained, but definitely it is going to get reduced and you are going to maintain it, but it is not going to get cured at the time of ANC period. Nerve compression syndrome, scapal tunnel syndrome, ice pack, resting with the hands in elevation, ultrasound, splinting, limiting respection. Posterior tibial nerve compression or the myalgia parasitica. That means, uh, as I just mentioned, if there is a nerve compression, there is a edema or the water retention inside your body because of the hormonal changes, it puts a pressure on the nerves and these are the issues you can face. Certain times, ultrasound uh, electrotherapeutic modality of the physiotherapy is going to help you. At the home, you can definitely apply ice on those painful parts and otherwise the splinting, that means the support system to that particular part is going to help you. These nerve compressions can be continued at the time of your postnatal period as well. So those things, the same application, you can do it at the time of postnatal period too. Varicose vein is avoid standing or the sitting for the prolonged period of time with the legs dependent. Uh, when you're not taking any support for the foot, if your legs are hanging for the prolonged period of time, or otherwise you are standing by keeping your feet together. That means the base of support has altered, uh, is very less. And a frequent or a vigorous ankle dorsiflexion, pantoflexion is not able to perform because of the continuous edema on the feet. So that time varicose veins development is uh, pretty common. Or otherwise you can face those issues uh, because of the genetic or the congenital issues as well. So that time you can start doing an ankle toe movement. So that means a dorsiflexion, pantoflexion, brisk walking, elevate the feet when sitting or the laying, or elastic stocking may be worn. Sciatica, reducing the activity level within the pain-free range, avoiding uh, a positioning which are going to put a pressure on the back or otherwise take a proper support system can be the lumbar support pillow. Postural corrections, that means an ergonomic advice which are coming in the next slide are very mandatory for you. Muscle cramp can be the calf stretches is going to help you. Massages, deep kneading, tell somebody to do it for you. It will be good help for you and it will be a good relaxation as well. Vigorous foot exercises are going to help you, but if you are on a bed rest, then uh, that time you can do it with the passive exercises and you can maintain those muscle cramps. A pre-bedtime brisk walk or vigorous foot exercises and a bomb bath may help uh, as a prophylactic method for them, but definitely muscle cramps on and off are going to be present there and you have to deal with it with a good exercise fitness protocol. Women with the special needs. The one is the gestational diabetes. Walking, stationary bicycling, low impact aerobics and swimming along with the uh, low carbohydrate and a high protein diet. 5 to 10 minutes of warm up and a cool down period involving some flexibility exercises and the precautions including monitoring of the blood glucose almost uh, every week, every day before it is coming to the normal. Scheduling rest periods and uh, carefully tra uh, tracking the fetal activity and the uterine contractions if you are suffering from the gestational diabetes. 
pregnancy induced hypertension or the preeclampsia eclampsia bed rest is advisable as i just mentioned in the previous slide that you have to left uh, lie down on the left side position so that there will be no compression on the venous return which is going towards your heart competitive athletes is something which we have to take on in consideration because uh, for those people uh, who are into the competitive athletic uh, sports uh, then those people generally face issues with the conceiving because of the hormonal imbalance or some sort of an uh, 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 well being of that particular uh, in a particular woman the major concerns are the effects of the pregnancy on the competitive ability the second is effect on the strain is training on the pregnancy constant supervision by an obstetric care is provided you have to visit it on and off uh, whatever may be the symptom if there is something not with the normal pregnancy routine then you have to immediately go and check yourself additional evaluation to assess fetal growth and well being has to be done you already have to inform your gynecologist and obstetrician that you are a you are into the competitive sports you are into this kind of a field since these many years and this is how exactly you have managed your lifestyle and uh, these are the things you are going to do it in a daily routine but you have to uh, but you want to continue with this pregnancy and you want to have the baby then this is how exactly you have to follow the routine with the diet as well as uh, with the physiotherapy fitness so that time physio physiotherapist and the gynecologist will help you to maintain the fetal growth the well being as well as to uh, help you to give the guidelines for the effect uh, how to avoid the strenuous training or the, at the time of pregnancy women at the workplace some um, nowadays it industry is going so fast and people are into the more of sedentary lifestyle those have to take on in special consideration at the time of covid most of the people were sitting at home they were working from home or otherwise sometimes you are going to sit in the office chair for the prolonged period of time so work related stress injuries diseases or the discomfort which we call it as a musculoskeletal disorders as well so those things can be analyzed and can be reduced if you are going to take in good ergonomic analysis and good ergonomic advices control of the risk factors by making modifications in the task or the working techniques ergonomic advices and the postural corrections as per your professional requirement is mandatory for the women who are going to work uh, for the throughout 9 months so that they will be avoiding any kind of an injuries to the growing womb or otherwise to themselves in the even in the near future postnatal care now we are going to start uh, we have just finished the part of the antenatal care now we are going to switch to postnatal care postnatal period is the period following delivery during which the new mother body begins to recover and return to the normal role of physiotherapy in the postnatal care is introducing an exercise and a relaxation program which is mandatory for the mother who has just delivered the baby thereby assessing the new mother's physical recovery restoration of the muscle strength and the tone which has already got into the laxity she has put on lot of weight there will be lot of uh, imbalance in the tone and the strength of her body muscles so that restoration can be done at the time of postnatal care in the physiotherapy treatment of the musculoskeletal issues which she had uh, at the time of antenatal uh, period now she is going to treat it in the postnatal time teaching correct ergonomics for the breastfeeding handling the baby and the household chores using this opportunity to educate the mother regarding the various family planning methods and its importance family planning is very important uh, for the overall well being of the woman when she is into the uh, postnatal period because uh, immediately conceiving again the next one might can damage to her body if she has conceived in the uh, late age uh, like uh, at the age of 35 to 30 uh, at the time of 40 or otherwise it is related to the ivf uh, um, conceiving then those things we have to uh, tell those parents as well as that woman uh, who is undergoing those kind of an postnatal period providing support and counseling and helping to cope up with the stress uh some new changes have started happening into the woman's life or uh, the baby has come out now she is also recovering from the hormonal imbalance as well as the new baby is in her hand and she has to take care of her as well as her baby so that time she might can go into the stress the family support is at most important the second important that helping uh, she has to feel very free to ask to uh, somebody's help that i am not well i need your help so those kind of a things uh, she has to understand that kind of a counseling has to be done this is the period when she need the most of the time helping hand as well as a good emotional support so those things can be cope up with a good counseling and helping cope up with the stress educating regarding importance of the postnatal exercises and the breastfeeding physiotherapy following the normal vaginal delivery 
these exercises you can start immediately after delivering the baby also because there will be uh, breeding for the at least one and a half months or something that she is going to experience even after the caesar even after the vaginal delivery that time she is already weak because the delivery has already happened so you are not supposed to go into the vigorous exercise protocol you have to develop it with the very simple simple exercises can be your uh, breathing exercises can be the pelvic floor muscle strengthening exercises can be an active movements of the limb can be a good walking in the fresh air these are certain exercises pelvic tilts gluteal set single knee to chest there are lot many exercises which we can treat as per the individual goal cat and camel exercises single straight leg exercises abdominal curl ups bridging she can perform following the cesarean section if she is experiencing lot of pain even with the painkillers and a certain uh, relaxer if it is not helping uh, those it are not helping her then you can definitely think of an option for the tens for the pain relieving modality diaphragmatic breathing and a segmental expansion exercises are uh, mandatory for her even uh, she has to start it as soon as anesthesia is getting relief because uh, when she is doing those exercises at the time of uh, the next day itself she has to start to overcome anesthesia effect and she will not develop any kind of a cuff or any kind of another injuries to the muscle the splinted cuffing she has to perform to uh, get out get the get out of the effect of the anesthesia which she has uh, can be the spinal anesthesia can be the ga uh, generally we never give ga at the time of cesarean section it is always a spinal now it has more become advanced there are many other types of also it is very small surgery so those time to avoid those kind of an effect of the anesthesia we give the splinted cuffing knee rolling can be done uh, to uh, give the good relaxation to the abdominal muscles the movements of the limb pelvic floor exercises pelvic tilt and bridging exercises can be done after the 3 uh, to 4 days or the 5 days uh, after the cesarean section because already the stitches are there and she has to perform those exercises within the range or to avoid uh, any kind of pain but to get an a uh, good relaxation she has to start immediately mobilization that means the uh, walking climbing or the otherwise standing from the next day itself whenever the uh, catheter is going to get removed the uh, anesthesia effect has completely gone and now she has to sit and go to the toilet activity that time the basic activity she has to start with the movements of the limb and then later on it can progress to the more advanced protocol for her but the vigorous activities of the physiotherapy or otherwise in any kind of a yoga therapy she is able to perform only after the 6 to 8 weeks that means a two months uh, she has to take a uh, give a complete relaxation to her body and she has to perform just a gentle gentle stretching exercises or can be a uh, just a good walking exercises then only she will be able to join the vigorous exercises when the stitches are completely healed her uh, stomach muscles are coming into the completely neutral her bleeding has completely stopped and she is into a good well being of her and then she can start with the vigorous exercises postnatal problems and the physiotherapy can be perineal pain rest and apply an ice for the 10 to 15 minutes is going to help you a lot pelvic floor exercises using contract relax technique the relaxation techniques with the contract relax technique use of the cushions at the time of sitting electrotherapeutic modality can be an ultrasound pulse electromagnetic energy uh, low laser uh, low level laser therapy infrared or the surfacing which are uh, very rarely be used but ultrasound is pretty common it tends is pretty common which we uh, require at the time of relieving this kind of an pain diastasis recti uh, is something gap between the recti abdominal muscles of greater than 25 mm palpated just superior to the umbilicus as i just mentioned if the time of antenatal uh, period if you are facing any kind of an weakness or any kind of an issues with the muscle those those are going to get continued at the time of postnatal time also or otherwise at the time of delivery if the injuries had happened if the muscles are got expand completely the contractions are very high that time also you can face this kind of an issue and diastasis recti can develop to overcome that particular issue you can do the isometric abdominal exercises head lifts head lifts with the pelvic tilt leg sliding with the pelvic tilts uh, pelvic tilts in quadruple position these are the basic one which i am telling you which you can just search and you can do it on your own which are not going to harm you at all but as i just said if you want to uh, overcome these kind of an issues for the lifetime or the permanent pain then definitely visit a good physiotherapist and get yourself treated if a diastasis is large it is recommended to use a temporary abdominal support like an abdominal binder abdominal binder can be your uh, good uh, cotton uh, dupatta or otherwise it can be a good uh, abdominal binder which is available on the internet or otherwise in the medical store you can go and you can check for yourself depends in on the how diastasis is large strengthening of the weak muscles by low load endurance exercises 
mobilization of the sacroiliac lumbar or the limbo uh, sacral region in the case of the low back pain teaching to maintain the correct postures and the correct ergonomics hot packs can help you to uh, relieve the back pain <coughs> thoracic pain postural corrections gentle exercises hot and ice pack thoracic pain is something people experience quite and often because the breastfeeding is going on now the muscles are coming to a original position now the center of gravity has shifted to our original place because the baby is come out baby is completely out of the womb and those things now the affecting the back muscles also so whenever the muscles are coming to their complete relaxation and coming to the original position and original length these kind of and postural corrections are required and you can experience these issues very for a very few period of time but you have to treat it and you have to overcome those issues with a good exercise protocol sympathesis pubis is an addition to treatment used antenatally other methods can be used here the trochanter belt or the full pelvic binder full pelvic binder which is most of the time i have advised drawing the abdomen in the encouraged uh, 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 But drawing the abdomen is, uh, in, is encouraged before moving around the bed. Tens U.S. orthopedic aids. Uh, uh, many women experience at the time of turning from left to right, right to left. There is something moving inside, which is a severe contraction they feel for the initial few weeks at the time after the cesarean section or after the uh, sometimes even after the vaginal delivery as well. When the uterus is coming to the normal, that time you can go for these kind of and belts or these are the uh, movements so which they can learn how to do it and how they have to strengthen those muscles so it will help them to overcome these issues. After pain, tens over T ten L one and S two and S four that intervenes with the uterus and the perineum may relieve pain. Exercises are some of the uh, things which you can take in consideration. Abdominal induration, mo moist pack or the S W T can be given to resolve the intramuscular hematoma, which I generally advise after the six to eight weeks of the particular cesarean sections or the normal vaginal delivery. When the complete uh, bleeding has stopped and now the person is still experiencing those kind of an abdominal induration or the pain, then they can go for the SWD kind of an uh, modalities. Circulatory problems can be the varicose vein, uh, vigorous and frequent ossification, plantar flexion, pressure stocking, sitting with the leg with the leg raised. Edema uh, definitely get reduced after the post pregnancy, uh, post delivery. But vigorous ankle toe movements, resting with the leg elevated, and pressure stockings are going to be the uh, one of the solutions for those. Deep vein thrombosis is something when the person is completely sedentary, and that can uh, uh, with the effect of anesthesia something has gone wrong, or otherwise there is a gaping in the particular stitches. Vigorous ankle toe movements and the leg elevated. Avoid pressures on the back of the calf while carrying out and any activity. The TVT is uh, in the iliofemoral region is going to be there. The calf and the iliofemoral region are one of the most commonest site where uh, the deep vein thrombosis can happen post delivery. So bed rest may be advised till the swelling subsides. Legs in elevation, foot exercises, quadriceps or the gluteal muscle contractions, hip and knee flexion and extension can be uh, to increase the good circulation. bladder and bowel movements the stress incontinence the kegel exercises the muscular muscle stimulators or the electromyography or the bladder retraining which we have the uh, which we are going to do it even in the antenatal care which are same applicable in the postnatal care as well bowel incontinence or the constipation if still continued from the antenatal to the postnatal care then you have to definitely work on your core exercises core muscle exercises as well as your body fitness activity and you have to uh, take a laxative so to overcome those kind of issues along with the same kegel exercises if the uh, female is facing any kind of a psychological problem can be the uh, uh, maternity baby or the third day blues can be a perpural psychosis or the postnatal depression uh, if there is a breast engorgement mastitis or the tender or the cracked nipples those things can be uh, treated with a good massage technique as well as good relaxation technique as well as with the good physiotherapy uh, which is going to relieve you from the anxiety and the depression if there is getting severe then you have to consult a good psychologist now the ergonomic advices for the activities of the daily living for the anc and the pnc period when the, there are multiple positions and there are multiple pillows are available in the market you can use even the any home pillow which is going to give a support in between your legs as well as for the uh, growing belly as well as for the good uh, support system to the shoulder so the shoulder should not roll forward and go into the protracted position so you have to take a thickness of the pillow which is up to the shoulder uh, thickness or otherwise you can just invest for yourself into the good uh, c shape or the u shape pillow which is available like this and you can go for yourself uh, for the throughout 9 months and get a complete relaxation at the time of sleeping 
this is how you should get up always from the bed you have to turn yourself take your legs down take a support of the hand and get up with a straight spine this is how you can do the vomit or otherwise you can do the brushing you have to take the distance between two legs shoulder width apart so that center of gravity will definitely pass through you instead of passing through any one joint of the body so it will avoid any kind of bed bearing positions to you this is how you have to spread your legs bend forward from the hips so the pressure will be uh, completely on the hip not on the stomach or otherwise uh, not on the back so it will help you to overcome any kind of an issues in the near future so this is how you can do this kind of an postures in the antenatal and as well as in the postnatal care squatting and lifting this is how exactly you have to go down again take the distance go down from your knees bend forward from your hips lift the object and get up with a straight spine ergonomic technique uh, which is required can be an ironing uh, board or otherwise you can stand uh, you are standing in front of the kitchen workstation so that time make sure that you are going to put a 2 to 3 inches foot stool and then going to do any kind of a bending or any kind of a repetitive task so it will relieve any kind of a stress on your spine as well as on the legs this is how you have to lift uh, any object take a distance again bend uh, bend down from your knees bend forward from the hips and lift the object but i generally advise from the first trimester itself you are not supposed to do any kind of an overlifting if you are into the cesarean section also you have to take care of your muscles uh, do not do over uh, weight lifting because it might can damage to the healing muscles as well as it can damage to the future uh, also so make sure if the uterus is coming to the neutral you are completely into the good fitness level even if the, after the vaginal delivery or the cesarean section even in the antenatal care you are not supposed to do any kind of a heavy weight lifting final alignments for the different bags if you are going for the shopping you are going to carry most of the time i suggest you can take any kind of a sack pack if you not possible then if you are taking any side bag then take it on the back on the hip not at the side so that the shoulder level going to get maintained it will not cause any kind of a pressure on the stomach or it will not get pulled back so that it will cause a back pain if you are taking a briefcase then definitely take something in your opposite hand to maintain the good alignment of the spinal cord if you are going to travel uh, definitely in the third trimester you have to make sure the travel for the shorter distance not for the longer distance above and below the bump not over it which is utmost important that you have to make sure how you are wearing a seat belt three point seat belt should be worn throughout because it is going to give a good support system from the any kind of vibrations which are coming from down how to take care of your baby when you are lifting your baby you have to lift it from the shoulder and then you are going to go down you are going to bend you are going to take a support system it will be a good active position by keeping a one leg resting and one leg in the air and it will be a good lifting positions against gravity so you will not damage your spine at the time of lifting this is how exactly people do the mistake when they are sitting if their feet are unsupported if there is no back support automatically baby as well as the mother both are into a good uh, any kind of a uh, uh, wrong feeding postures and it can cause a uh, damage to the spine as well as uh, a baby is also not comfortable while taking the feeding so you have to make sure you are in a good comfortable positions like this take one leg elevated you have to keep your both feet supported or otherwise take a one pillow from back otherwise lying down and taking the support system and make sure that baby is in the lying down position in the sideways and taking the feed whenever you are going to do diapering or the baby cleaning grooming activities most of the female immediately bend forward from the hip that time their knees are not bent even the spine is continuously into the c shape so that puts a lot of pressure on the spine and it can damage in the future so make sure you are going to keep your spine straight you are going to make sure you are into active position and then do any kind of a diapering or the baby cleaning and grooming activity or otherwise you can always put a foot stool over there whenever you are going to change uh, the diaper or the baby cleaning grooming activity you are going to do on the bed just one simple foot stool keep your one leg on that and bend forward from the hip and do those activities this is how exactly uh, i uh, suggest you for the bathing uh, people can uh, do it in the any kind of a bathtub in the initial period if they are alone or otherwise uh, they can take a help of the elevators nowadays even the bathtubs are up now are available with the elevators in the inclined position you can keep your baby and you can do all kinds of bathing activities when you are carrying your baby make sure that you are holding it for the bum as well as you are keeping that baby in the middle so it will not be putting pressure on any one side of your body so it in the future you can avoid one uh, one sided uh, up shoulder uh, one sided down kind of an postures or otherwise a one sided contractions of the muscles it will prevent uh, even in the damage in the future this is how exactly you can carry baby in the sling 
क्या फ्रंट कैरिंग इज समथिंग विच आई ऑलवेज एडवाइज टू द पेरेंट्स बिकॉज वेन द बेबी इज फेसिंग फ्रंट दे आर एबल टू सी ईच एंड एवरी पर्सन then automatically they are very happy and even uh, they are not going to show any kind of a tantrums to the mother so even the baby and as well as the mother both are in the very comfortable positions when they are walking by with by wearing this sling if the baby is not well they make sure that baby is facing to you so they are feeling the warmth and the comfort position so it will be a good relaxation for the baby as well as for the mother when the active uh, uh, playing activity is going on can be the front position or can be the back position can be maintained with the sling these are the certain pillows available in the market which are uh, which call it as a breast feeding pillow you can use it at the time of feeding or as well as can give it to your baby so it will be a good comfort position for them and they feel secure into that uh, particular pillow when they are sitting over there when you are teaching baby to walk or otherwise uh, using a stroller or otherwise a pram that time you can uh, make sure that your spine should be straight you are going to little bit bend from the knees and then you are going to make sure that you are bending from the hip not from the spine to avoid any kind of a damage in the future if you have any questions you can write down you can ask me or i have provided my mobile number there is a whatsapp to that or otherwise you can directly visit my website there is an email you can write down to me so uh, if any questions any queries related to this website uh, this particular presentation if you have anything do let me know i am uh, i'll be glad to answer all these kind of questions to you thank you so much for being so patient and a wonderful audience and listening to me very patiently if any kind of a thing which is missing into this uh, definitely you can add to those uh, in the comment box but definitely i have tried to cover all, as much as possible in this 30 to 40 minute session if any uh, thing which is remaining we can definitely discuss over and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, have more questions from your end thank you so much thank you mma for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, as a resource person and thank you for inviting me for this and considering my name thank you everyone thank you so much